success at last for Peter Brock in the Mobile Sierra. A good second to Glenn Seaton in the Peter Jackson entry and Colin Bond keeping his hopes alive with a very sound third. You know, I rather doubt anyone could have scripted a better finish to a series than this year's grand final showdown of the Shell Nationals at Sydney's Oran Park. And to make matters even more interesting, Jim Richards has captured pole in the Nissan over Brock, Johnson, Longhurst, Bow and Seaton. Little wonder then why the fans are hanging off the rafters. Beautiful weather conditions here today. A capacity grid, a capacity crowd has turned out. The final round of the 1990 series and the beautiful weather has even brought out the politicians, including Dr. Hewson. Ready for the start. Richards head to head against Brock. Richards wins the start. Absolutely flies off the line. Everyone gets off the line comfortably, heads down towards the first turn. And look at Richards spread eagling the field already as they head down. And a brilliant start, I think, from Tony Longhurst. He got a break. Uh, Richards did exactly that in Perth. Mikey's obviously got all those four wheels pulling at the same time. There's no difficulties with their differentials in that start. Field closing up a bit in the infield. And now we have a couple of spoilers, Neil Crompton. Tony Longhurst, a magnificent start there, puts him up into second spot. John Bauer is away quicker than Dick Johnson. Colin Bond, a lot of work to do out of position number 11. This Rock was a terrific uh, start from Tony. Aggressive the first couple of corners and cleared himself up from position four on the grid after recording a 1.12.02 and chasing his old teammate, Jim Richards. Well, ideally, Johnson wanted Brock up there giving uh, Richards plenty of curry in these opening laps, but uh, Brock, he must have uh, slipped off the line with his clutch. He's a long way back, seventh spot there. You can see him in the picture now. He really and he'll work his line. way through, no doubt. Colin Bond starting out of 11th up to 9th as they complete the first lap on Grand Final Day at Oran Park. Now it looks like uh, the GIO car of Gibbs has uh, gone off the racetrack and he's trying to rejoin on the loop area heading down to Sutton's Corner. No one wants to lose the drift. I was going to say no one wants to lose the drift. They don't want to lose the, the draft. slip, the draft. You've got me, Michael. And uh, Brock, he's taken that draft there. He's in a bad position here. He needs to turn right in a second or two, and uh, Dick will be well-placed to stay in front. But uh, no doubt that that bad start on Peter Brock's part is costing him dearly now. He'd like to have nothing but fresh air in front of him, but he's got a big shell air in front of him at the moment. Another little bite here, and it looks like he's got him. Through on the inside of Dick Johnson, over the top of the bridge, so Peter Brock picks up one keeping in mind without going into the full scenario of where everyone's got yeah and should finish for Jim Richards the title will be Richards if he wins or finishes second to anyone but Johnson so at the moment there's no problem about that gentlemen Jim is just spread eagling the field in the Nissan GTR and there he goes we're looking now from uh, the Dulux cam on top of Glenn Seaton's car great view chasing Dick Johnson down the straight and uh, Johnson's ch chosen uh, the harder of the two Dunlop tires that are available to him and uh, hoping that everything will be fine for him in the last uh, quarter of the game. Yeah. But uh, he is a long way off the front runners at the moment. He's got Brock, uh, all, both the Benson and Hedges cars, uh, and of course, Jim Richards in the sunset already. Jim's 12 seconds clear of Tony Longhurst at this uh, relatively early stage, running 40 minutes into the race, and behind this duo, We've got uh, Colin Bond about two seconds shy of the mark and then a small gap to George Fury who joins the Peter Jackson team for the first time this weekend in another of the Sierras. Can't get any closer than that. I think Dick's driving fairly defensively at the moment. Some fantastic pickies today from uh, Mark Woodley, Charlie Busby and our race cam boys. The Dunlop race cam out of the, uh, the rear of uh, Dick Johnson's Shell Sierra. Rock down into some traffic. Right behind him comes Bauer. John Bowe's done a superb job in the Shell team all year. Backed up Dick beautifully on every occasion. Just the once when he was bumped out in Malala. A great team driver and an asset to the Shell team. The gap from first to second, Richards to Longhurst is now 18 seconds. It's like an Ed and Senna performance. It's a bit like that. Here we go. Here's Brocky and Longhurst snap. Break that 18 seconds, Jim Richards to Peter Brock. Brock. So Brock has been able, after that appalling start,
to be able to pick the pace up, come back through the pack. He was back to what, about six or seven? Seventh, I think. And uh, now back to second. Let's have a look at a replay here of Glenn Seaton looking for Dick Johnson. This happened just a few seconds ago as we're checking on Brock. Down on the inside, moment of truth. Nice move, very nice. Was. Dick left a little opening there and Glenn took advantage of it in the Peter Jackson Sierra. So he also has improved his spot grand final of the Shell Ultra Australian Touring Car Championship. There is your race leader, Jimmy Richards, in the Nissan GTR. Lap number 20. Beautiful looking car. Some great shots again from our Dunlop race cameras. Bondage straight down the outside. And that was just too quick. Johnson's What's happened to, to Johnson? Johnson's headed for the pits. Here he comes, down pit lane. Yes, he's got a difficulty. So, tyre change for Dick Johnson. The championship had already slipped away. There was absolutely uh, no chance whatsoever after slipping back through the pack that uh, he had any hold back on it again. It was going to be a record-breaking championship as well, Michael. Yep. His sixth, the greatest number to date has been five. Oops. Pete Gagan, there's Tony Longers, this whacked that very tight right-hander at the base of the bridge. He had real pressure on him in the last lap from John Bow as we take Dunlop race cam. Dick Johnson rejoining. Uh, on the last lap through, Bow was right on his tail, so they were having a great scrap for what was third place. So Longhurst will drop back in the order now. We'll give you the top ten again as soon as possible. Longhurst to the pits. He's got the rear bumper dragging on that car. They'll obviously take an opportunity to throw some new tyres on as well. Glenn seat to the pits. Car 35. There he goes in the foreground. So this is really drastically altering the shape of the top ten at the moment. Mechanic pulling like crazy on the back of the car. He uh, needs some kind of gigantic scissors to snip that bumper bar. It's only plastic. It's not a steel bumper bar. So they are able to get their hands around it. Oh, Ellen Jones with the bonnet up. I said uh, last night I was getting set for a Queensland trifecta. The Broncos the Brizzy Bullets and Dick Johnson. You've let me down, pal. Oh, mate, the race not over yet. Oh, good on you. <laughs> you think I was safer having my money on you than the Brisbane Bears? Oh, you wouldn't believe, mate. The, the things that can go wrong when you don't want them to. Tell us about it, Dick. Well, I think my drink bottle had an enema inside the car here, and it, it created fumes because I used some gunk in the bottle. It nearly blinded me. Then Brock got past me, would you believe? Unfortunately. Yeah. And that thing of his, like, I nearly choked to death on Mobile One. It looks like the last train to Fernie Grove. <laughs> Great to see you haven't lost your sense of humour. Uh, what's the use, mate? You die if you lose that. You're going to battle on and try and pick up a couple of points. Oh, uh, all we need is a bit of luck, mate. All right, go get them, Tiger. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, pal. Thank you. Lap 32. We're riding with the race leader, Jimmy Richards, with our Nissan race camp. Just as you joined us just a second or so ago, Colin Bond and John Bow, that great scrap that we've been following. Have a look at this. Down on the inside comes Colin Bond. Defensively driving was John Bow, and wham. Wham on. That now that... A little that, uncalled for. Mate. Oops, and also a catch on the front. Bond is then able to sweep around the outside and continue on. Johnny Bow also picks up another gear, but he's carrying the legacy of that little coming together. Bond is fifth in the race. Bow is still sixth in the race. And the mover and the shaker in the pack is George Fury up to third. That's the fastest part of the circuit, and uh, I, I think uh, slightly unsporting uh, manoeuvre. 30 runs in third place out on the racetrack, and that, of course, is a familiar face to motorsport, Georgie Fury. George been out doing a little rallying uh, earlier in the year, and Glenn Seaton has uh, very astutely uh, grabbed his services, put him on the uh, payroll for the rest of the year, so you can see this car as being a formidable runner at Bathurst. Certainly so. George knows his way around there, I believe is still credited with the fastest lap ever in a little turbo. And a Nissan product, yes. They come down the hill again. Jimmy Richards sitting just in behind Mark Scaife. The point I was trying to make earlier about Nissan deciding that uh, that uh, they were quite happy to release George Fury 
considering they were only planning on doing uh, a minor number of enduro races this year, it's been a bonus for the Glen Seaton team that he's able to join them because I think he will bring uh, some solidarity to that team as they go towards Bathurst. Mark Scaife running eighth on the racetrack at the moment. Well, Peter will be kicking himself today. He probably would have, uh, I honestly felt, had the potential to win the race, but you can't give away anything at this level of competition. You have to grab the start by the throat. You have to get into the first corner, and you've got to keep that daylight in front of you and nice, fresh air. Uh, whatever was his problem off the line, it's cost him dearly, and it's given, honestly, given Jim Richards a free run here today. Uh, George Fury still lapping very well here. I think the, um, the thing that everybody forgets with the Nissan, though, Alan, uh, before we get all too pessimistic, is doing a great job today. It's, it's another 50 or 60 kilograms heavier than even something like a Commodore, and it's still quite hard on its brakes and quite hard on its tyres. It hasn't been pushed along today, so to some extent, it, it's got the most ideal conditions that it could run under. At Wanneroo, it was under pressure. Uh, under pressure as the chequered flag comes out and a win to Jim Richards. As we... Approach the 50 minute mark and Richards the champion for 1990 and giving Nissan their very first Australian Touring Car Championship. Tremendous performance from Jim, the team, Fred Gibson and the company. Let's check them out for you. How they've finished, the win going to Jim Richards, second place going to Peter Brock, third to George Furies. We check them out on our race score, fourth to Colin Bond and fifth to John Bauer. Well, no doubt about the winner of the grand final, or the championship for that matter, Jimmy Richards, the Shell Ultra National Touring Car Champion for 1990. Here's the final point standings for you. Richards, the winner on 102, second to Peter Brock on 85, third Dick Johnson on 83, and a fine fourth to Colin Bond on 81. I trust you've enjoyed this compile of championship highlights from our seven sport telecast during the year, made possible by Chevron Publishing in association with the Confederation of Australian Motorsports. I'm Mike Raymond. Bye till next time.